Designed by John Browning, the M1911 is the best known of his designs to use the short recoil principle in its basic design, and it endured in service for over 100 years. The what pistol became an icon for 100 years, and he's still an amazing weapon. Oh wow, this, this is really impressive. These lists have been crazy. Today I will be reacting to Top 10 Oldest American Weapons Still in Use. This should be a fascinating video, but before I go into that, can I ask you for one thing? If you can leave a like, thank you so much, my friend. This is the best way to show support. If you can subscribe, well, in that case, forget about it. You make my day. Have that in consideration. Now, link for the original video in my description. I also have a playlist for my military reactions. But uh, yeah, let's play this one. Okay. These are 10 of the oldest weapon manufacturers in America still use today. I'm quite curious. As far as weapon systems are concerned, having the best available can be key to success on the battlefield. But with rapid changes in technology, some weapons come and go rather quickly. Other times, weapons are so well designed and so effective they stay in service for decades. That's a beast. 10. UH-1 Huey Helicopter. The UH-1 Huey is a utility military helicopter powered by a single turboshaft engine with two-blade main and tail rotors. The first member of the prolific Huey family it was developed by Bell Helicopter to meet a United States Army's 1952 requirement for a medical evacuation and utility helicopter. Oh wow, 52? And he's still in use? How crazy is that actually? And first flew in 1956. Okay. The UH-1 was the first turbine-powered helicopter to enter production in 1960 for the United States military, and more than 16,000 have been built since. Oh, that's amazing. The UH-1 was originally designated HU-1, hence the Huey nickname, which has remained in common use despite the official redesignation to UH-1 in 1962. Whoa. The UH-1 first saw service in combat operations during the Vietnam War, with around 7,000 helicopters deployed. And he's still an amazing one. That's crazy. Looks really nice also. 9. M61 Vulcan Vulcan? The M61 Vulcan is a hydraulically, electrically, or pneumatically driven six-barrel, air-cooled, electrically-fired Gatling-style rotary cannon Damn. which fires 20mm rounds oh. at an extremely high rate, typically 6,000 rounds per minute. The M61 is the United States' primary armament for fixed-wing aviation. After entering service in 1959, the gun saw extensive use in Vietnam by all branches fighting in the skies. Oh, you guys, okay, um, I never realized this, but you guys kind of hide the weapon in the plane. Unless we are talking about the uh, Warthog, right? That is evident, but uh, this one is fantastic. It's fighting in the skies. The gun was credited with shooting down 39 MiGs during the war. Since entering service in 1959, the M61 is still found on America's fighters and in the Navy's Fallon Seawinds. The sound is amazing. Actually, let's run it back. In service in 1959, the M61 is still found on America's fighters and in the Navy's Fallon Sea Winds. Holy. Eight, M14 rifle. The M14 rifle, officially the United States rifle, is an American select fire battle rifle that fires 7.62 by 51 millimeter NATO ammunition. It became Wait, I thought the M16 was the official rifle. Is the M14 the, the OG, the original one? Became the standard issue rifle for the US military in 1959, replacing the M1 Garand rifle in the US Army by 1958 and the U.S. Cool. Marine Corps by 1965, until being replaced by the M16 rifle oh, beginning see. in 1968. 
The M14 rifle remains in limited service in all branches of the U.S. military, with variants used as sniper and designated marksman rifles, accurizing competition weapons, and ceremonial weapons by honor guards, color guards, drill teams, and ceremonial guards. Oh yeah, that's a great point. I never saw those guards using the M16, they use this one. Okay. Oh, this is an amazing weapon, right, my friends? Can be a sniper. Wow. Can the M16 also be a sniper? I don't think so, right? Only this one. I, I don't know a lot about weapons, my friends, but uh, it's fascinating. Would, would you guys agree? Seven. KC-135 Stratotanker oh boy. The Boeing KC-135 Stratotanker Beast. is a military aerial refueling aircraft that was developed from the Boeing 367-80 prototype alongside okay. the Boeing 707 airline. It is the predominant variant of the C-135 Stratolifter family of transport aircraft. Mm. The KC-135 entered service with the United States Air Force in 1957 it's one of the six military fixed-wing aircraft with over 60 years of continuous service with its original operator. The KC-135 is supplemented by the larger KC-10. Studies have concluded that many of the aircraft could be flown until 2030, although maintenance costs have greatly increased. The KC-135... Okay, so still six more years. That's amazing. 135 is oh, they okay. They refueled the small uh, jets. Okay. To be partially replaced by the Boeing KC-46 Pegasus. Six, M60 machine gun. Okay. Adopted in 1957 as the U.S. military's general purpose machine gun. The M60 actually borrowed liberally from the German MG42 machine gun speed system, while it also used the operating system of the FG42. The result was a gas-operated, air-cooled, belt-fed, 7.62mm machine gun that was technically a crew-served weapon, meaning a team of three would transport, load, and fire it, but it could still be handled by a single soldier. Meant to replace both the M1918 Browning automatic rifle and the M1919A6 Browning machine gun, the M60 was introduced in 1957 and was perhaps the best Cold War era general purpose machine gun. 5. B-52 That was amazing. 52 Stratofortress. The Boeing Another B-52 Boeing. Stratofortress is an American long-range subsonic jet-powered strategic bomber. The B-52 was designed and built by Boeing, which has continued to provide support and upgrades. It has been in service with the United States Air Force since the 1950s. The bomber is capable of carrying up to 70,000 pounds of weapons. And okay, if you really think about technology as a big leap, in the, uh, I'm talking about, for example, from the 20s to the 50s, probably more than the 50s to today. Am I saying something stupid? Because I feel like this is still such an amazing technology. And if you go back 50 years... It is almost nothing, you know, you know. You know what I mean. But if you go fifty years in the future, basically today, the technology is uh, is is amazing. Don't get me wrong, but I feel like the leap is is not that impressive. Just looking at to, and that makes sense, right? Going from nothing to to something will always be more impressive than from something to something even better. But. Um, Sorry, my friends, English, not my main language. I, I hope I actually end up uh, presenting my point well. But uh, the reason I'm saying this is the other day, and uh, this ended up happening in a couple of reactions to military stuff. Uh, there is people leaving me the comments that, Andrea, that's not crazy technology, that's alien technology. And uh, at first I thought, oh, they are joking, because if you look at this stuff, it's really crazy, of course. But uh, then I started thinking, yeah, but the point they are making is all of the sudden... America had all of this stuff. Mm. Think about it. <laughs> I don't know. Just saying. As a typical combat range of more than 8,800 miles without aerial refueling. For more than 66 years, B-52s have been the backbone of the strategic bomber force. So this is basically the lion with the child. Yeah. Force for the United States, the B-52 is capable of dropping or launching the widest array of weapons in the U.S. inventory. Updated with modern technology, 
The B-52 is capable of delivering the full complement of joint developed weapons and will continue into the 21st century as an important Holy element of our nation's defenses. What the hell? The Air Force currently expects to operate B-52s through 2050 and be replaced by B-21 Raiders. The beat, see, the alien stuff, you cannot tell me. If you see this and you are not aware of this uh, jet slash plane, right? You will think, oh, I saw a spaceship, because look at that. Four, the M2 machine gun. The By the way, my friends, just one thing. I've been reacting to different stuff, and I've been letting the military stuff down a bit, but I miss reacting to military stuff. So leave a like if you also enjoy this type of reactions, because it is very important to, to me. The M2 machine gun, or Browning 50 caliber machine gun, is a heavy machine gun designed toward the end of World War I by John Browning. Okay. The M2 uses the much larger and much more power 50 BMG cartridge, which was developed alongside and takes its name from the gun itself. It has been referred to as Ma Deuce in reference Deuce. to its M2 nomenclature. The Browning 50 caliber machine gun has been used extensively as a vehicle weapon and for aircraft armament by the United States from the 1930s to the present. Dude, that's amazing. You can shoot this. Oh, I love it. It was heavily used during World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, the Falklands War, the Soviet Afghan War, the Gulf War, the Iraq War, and the war in Afghanistan in the 2000s and 2010s. Okay. It's the primary heavy machine gun of NATO countries and has been used by many other countries as well. It's a machine gun. <laughs> machine okay. gun. Oh, tutorial. <laughs> Three, the Browning M1919 machine gun. A testament to the designs of John Browning are that, in addition to the M1911, is the fact that he also developed the innovative water-cooled M1917 30 caliber heavy machine gun, which this guy created this. Oh, wow. Which truly improved upon the Maxima and Vickers designs that were used during the First World War. But he didn't stop there. He then improved his own design with the M1919 Browning, an air-cooled medium machine gun. The belt-fed, recoil-operated weapon had a reasonable rate of fire ranging from 400 to 600 rounds per minute and an effective range of 1,400 meters. While the development of general-purpose machine guns in the Cold War relegated the M1919 to a secondary role even 100 years later, this 30 caliber weapon is still very much in use today. Okay, still really good, so... Okay. Two, M1911 pistol. Oh, that's sick. The M1911, also known as the Colt 1911 or the Colt Government, is a single-action semi-automatic magazine-fed recoil-operated pistol chambered for the 45 ACP cartridge. Designed by John Browning, the M1911 is the best known of his designs to use the short recoil principle in its basic design, and it endured in service for over 100 years. The what pistol became the... an icon for... 100 years? And he's still an amazing weapon. Oh, wow. This, this is really impressive. This list have been crazy. It's strength in battle and by those who used it. The pistol was widely copied, and this operating system rose to become the preeminent type of the 20th century and nearly all modern center fire pistols. Modernized derivative variants of the M1911 are still in use by some units of the U.S. Army Special Forces, U.S. Marine Corps, and the U.S. Navy. You know what I realized watching these videos? You can actually become a nerd when it comes to military slash weapon stuff. You really can. Because there is history. You know what I mean? There is almost a lore behind the... the it's very fascinating if you if you really go into this, uh, seeing how this weapon has been evolved into that weapon, uh, now the future uh, of that line of weapons it, it's really really fascinating actually and even collecting this if you have money could be crazy crazy amazing i mean of course you cannot collect the helicopter stuff okay you guys got it that right but i'm saying basically small weapons one m1903 springfield 
Springfield. The M1903 Springfield is an American five-round magazine-fed, bolt-action, service-repeating rifle used primarily during the first half of the 20th century. The M1903 was one of the first rifles to use the famous .30-06 round oh, and was amazing. the standard American infantry rifle during World War I. Due to its balance, the M1903 is still popular with various military and drill teams and color guards, most notably the U.S. Army drill team. The knife on the top is crazy. This is, you guys call this bayonet, right? It's crazy. And was very important for close range when the enemy was attacking you, you may have to use the knife, I'm assuming. That's crazy. Basically two weapons, if you really think about it, is the knife and it's really two weapons. Oh, only that? Oh, damn it, I was enjoying the video. <laughs> okay, my friends, click here to subscribe or subscribe on my channel. That's even a better idea. That said, my friends, thank you so much for watching. Really means a lot. You guys end up spending this time with me. I mean, missing this uh, military reaction uh, reactions. Um, I love to, to do them. So leave me a like if you also enjoy this type of content and see you guys next time.